Tiff Dudell to come up to take his pole position. Shares the list of Storm, of course, with Julian Bailey. And alongside them on the front row, the combination of Steve O'Rourke and Tim Sugden. O'Rourke will take the first stint. Remember, this a two-driver affair, and they must change drivers between 15 and 35 minutes. There is Magnus Ballander on the inside of the second row, and on the outside of the second row, in the other of the listers, Ian Flux, who shares that car with Jake Ulrich. And back on the third row, on the inside there, in another of the listers, is Paul Evans, the former British Formula 3 runner, and on the outside of him, Andy Purvis. We're on the pace lap with Tiff Dedell. The safety car leading them round. And this championship really has gone from strength to strength. 29 cars here to take to the grid. And having started back in 1993, a series which is hugely strong. It's got a great variety of machinery in it. And on the inside there is Tiff Dedell. To the outside of him, Steve O'Rourke. They will take the first stint with Ballander and Flux behind. On the second row, a 50-minute race it is. And the clock starts as they cross the line. The lights go to green. And look at Ballander. A cracking start in the Porsche GT1 as they hammer their way down two cops. Oh, and Ballander is through. Tiff Dedell nowhere to go. And Steve O'Rourke will run out wide. Flux goes through. So too Paul Evans. And the load is free. Oh, and he's done all sorts of problems there. Steve O'Rourke trying to nurture the McLaren GT1 car back onto the circuit. Well, Nadell held on bravely there to hold on to that second place. But Valander, what a storming start in the Porsche after their troublesome weekend where they had to race in the GT2 car last weekend at Spa. And O'Rourke now has got a huge amount of work to do to try and claw his way back through the field. But at the moment, we've got a battle up front. Oh, what a big lock up there from Paul Evans. And that must have distracted for a moment. Ian Flux, you would think, behind the number eight car. The whole of the field streaming through. And look again at how much ground Steve O'Rourke has got to make up. Oh, and the spinner there is Charlie Cox in one of the Mustangs. Just avoided behind there. How an, oh, my word, and Cox goes across the field and behind this contact, one of the Venturis there. And also looks to be a huge amount of oil coming from one of the Porsches there. You can see there's a trail of lubricant left on the circuit, but let's refocus at the head of the field. Great scrap going on in for third place. Paul Evans ahead there in the yellow and blue car of Ian Flux behind. Both of them, of course, in the list of storms. And uh, you have to say that up ahead, well, here we are on board, in fact, with Paul Evans in third place. There's the gap up ahead that Ballander and Nadell. Nadell going through there in second place in the lead lister. And further back through the field, Steve O'Rourke still trying to make up the ground he lost with that opening skirmish down at Cops Corner. Look how much power that McLaren's got. It's almost obscene, isn't it? Well, that's the problem that uh, has beset Jamie Maserati. When Charlie Cox spun the Mustang, Maserati had nowhere to go. And you can see the debris that's uh, flung off that car. But we're back with our leaders, Valander from Nidell. Gap then back to third place, where we've got Evans and Flux still squabbling away. And there looks to be a problem there for Jeff Wyatt in the Marcus. It's five litre engine, looks to have given up the ghost. Or maybe it could be a transmission problem, but it looks to me to be engine as he indicates off, all safe and secure. But that's going to be the end of the race. Oh, and a big moment there, a bit of understeer for Tiffany Dell in that second place car behind Valander. Valander looks very smooth, you have to say, up front. Nadell looks to be really pushing hard. And there's Flux going through. Flux moves himself up into third place now, ahead of Paul Evans. And three Jaguar V12 engine cars chasing a Porsche. Well, what can they do about it at the moment? The only man who can mount a challenge as he does is Tiff Nadell to the inside of Valander. Surely he'll have the inside line. No, Valander fights back on the outside. Whoa, hang on there, Tiff. It's a bumpy ride through tops. Well, you've got to admire him for having a challenge. The oil flag being waved there. And further back down the field, Sandy McEwen in one of the Vonturis. Trying to get to the inside. He looks like he'll do that. He's to the inside of Paul Phillips in the 42 Porsche. So that picks him up a place. We're back with our overall leader and, of course, leading the GT1 class at the moment, Magnus Ballander. Really has been an up-and-down season for Ballander. Likewise, I suppose you could say, for uh, Tiff Dell to some extent, along with Julian Bailey. Here is uh, Alan Lloyd in the glorious Jaguar XJ220. Oh, and that's not the way to treat a 220, and he's got in all sorts of dramas and problems. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, there's a bit of body workshop damage to do there. Oh, my word, and Jamie Maserati, so a number of casualties in this opening third of the race. You can see the huge amount of oil. Now, that could be problematic for many of the drivers. Here's a replay. Charlie Cox spins it around. O'Rourke on the right, and I think that's Diane Osborne on the inside on the left. But as Charlie Cox tries to get out of everybody's way behind, Jamie Maserati runs into the back end of one of the Vonturis. 
and that's where all of that problem started. But uh, here is, in fact, Charlie Cox now with a blaze of lights behind him because Tiff Nadell is saying, come on, Charlie, out the way, I need to come through. The blue flag flies, which is an indication from the marshals to say there is a car behind you trying to pass. And here we are with the champions this year, the GT2 Viper, all dominant it's been, Richard Dean and Kurt Luby. And at the moment, Richard Dean having that first stint. And who's that slowing there as they come underneath us here across the start-finish line? It's the 18 car of Tony Soper. Well, Tony Soper's uh, Harrier looks to have run its course. And still Steve O'Rourke trying to pick up places as he turns through the ever-tightening Cox corner. There's plenty of room there, though. If you, oh, my word, there's a huge moment for Michael Quaife. Well, I think that engine's gone bye-bye. <coughs> Just sort yourselves out behind. Right, they can see where they're going, almost reminiscent of a Simon Templar car, isn't it? Putting out the secret trail behind. But let's get back to the upfront battle and passing the back markers to the inside there of Paul Phillips. Goes Tiff Nadell. Well, he doesn't, in fact, and that's going to allow Fluxy to get to the inside. Oh, and he spins the Porsche out. Oh, my word. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, Fluxy won't be best pleased with that. Neither, too, I don't think. Perhaps Paul Phillips. I'll leave you to make your mind up whose fault it was. But uh, certainly there was an incident there trying to get through past the back markers, and that's always one of the challenges in this GT category and the Privilege Insurance Championship. There is the pit board. It's going out to one of the listers. Where is he? He must be there somewhere. And what, of course, they're looking for is Ian Flux. That's the pit crew for Ian Flux. And they're wondering what's going on. Jake Ulrich looking on, looking a bit concerned. And uh, Lawrence also there on the radio talking to uh, Ian. Well, here's a replay of what happened. You can see Paul Phillips running wide, trying to keep out the way. Fluxy says, oh, there's a chance here. He goes up the inside, battling wheel to wheel with Tiff Nadell on the outside. Paul Phillips almost seeming to try and jump out the way, spins the car around. But the front and rear wheels respectively contact, and Fluxy's dumped in the gravel trap. Well, that's the end of his race, and so too Paul Phillips as he comes slowly into the pit lane. Fluxy will get a toe out from one of the wrecker crews here. But that's the end of his campaign for 1998. Well, who knows, maybe they'll come back to fight again in 1999. Let's hope so, because they've certainly been and added a huge amount to the championship this year, both Ian and Jake. Magnus Volander, though, at the moment, who uh, is joined this weekend by a different partner. Wolfgang Kaufmann will take the second stint there in the Blue Coral Slick 50 Porsche, as we're on board with Ian Astley. Well, Astley's going stormingly well in the number 34, the Lotus Esprit. This is the great scrap going on for the GT2 class. And at the moment, Astley in the Lotus is leading the Viper that has been so dominant this year. We're on board again with the Lotus as we complete another lap underneath the boarding. We go across the line. All the grid markings there, and to the outside is Dean. I don't think he can mount a challenge from there. He might try and dive up the inside. No, it's not to be. And even for second and third in the GT2 class, they're battling away. Steve O'Rourke tries to pick up another place. Will he do it? I don't think so this time. That's where he ran wide last time. You can see the languishing car of uh, Alan Lloyd in the gravel trap there. Just listen to the glorious sound of that engine. It's fantastic stuff. Here comes Valander. Now, just getting close to the time where they can, if they wish, start to make their pit stops. In fact, here come the first batch of them. So in come two of them. Up ahead of us is uh, Andy Purvis. He'll hand over to Thomas Erdos, and Tim Sugden will take over at the wheel of the McLaren. That's going to be a, an awesome sight to watch. So as you can see, Sugden getting in from the right-hand side of the car, tucks into that centre position. Oh, we've got uh, a brief fire in the pit lane. The extinguishers look to have done their job, but that's the Darien of Frank Bradley that's caught by there. A big lock-up out on the circuit by Ian Guest. Now, is that going to be a brake problem for Ian Guest? He didn't look to be arriving at that corner quicker than he has done before, but uh, here we are, still back in the pit lane. And Tim Sugton now will select the gear and using his BMW engine power, that McLaren out of the pit lane. Got to observe the rules in the pit lane, of course. Now, no evidence of any rain falling on our position here, but the windscreen wiper on Sugton's car just running, so we'll just keep an eye on that. I don't think it looks as though it's going to rain. Here we are, though, with Tiff Nadell still out there at the wheel. Oh, no, again, a lock-up. I'm sure Ian Guest has got brake problems. Perhaps that's a binding brake on the inside front, it seems to be. So we'll keep, again, a watching eye on that. We'll see what happens when he pits. Back on board with the lister of Tiff Nadell. And into the pit lane he comes. So Julian Bailey already 
to take over for the second half of this race, or two thirds almost it is. Mr. Dell negotiates that can be on occasion, especially the car as big as a Lister. A very tight entrance, and there is uh, Thomas Erdos now picking up some positions, having brought the Marcos in. Well, into the pit lane, finally has come Tiff Dell. There is Julian waiting and ready to climb on board. Look at the heat that's uh, built up underneath that car. It's no problem, I don't think, just the heat that's built up under the brakes and so on. Well, is there a problem, in fact, down there? Just a little bit of work. As Tiff tucks his partner in, and away comes Julian Bailey. The uh, Darien, you can see on the right-hand side there, we saw the smoke coming from that with the extinguisher, but here we've got the second of the Blue Coral Porsches, this one running in the GT2 class, and Tim Sugden powering up behind Dave Warnock. Warnock, you can almost see there, looked at his mirrors and thought, what the heck's that coming up behind me at such a rate of knots? The very distinctive McLaren F1 GTR, Tim Sugden using that sequential gearbox. And Ian Astley out there in the Lotus, still running very well indeed. Oh, there's a fire on board! Fire down below in the Richard Dean, Kurt Luby. Well, I'll tell you what, Richard Dean, quite understandably, out of that, let's hope he's OK. The marshals are on hand. There is Dean walking away. Well, that Viper that's been so reliable and dominant this year, going up in a major way. Uh, I'm not surprised the yellow flags are out there. The extinguisher being applied to the front end of that car. They'll get that put out as we go back on board with Tim Sugden. Of course, the good news we said earlier for Dean and Luby is they've already wrapped up the championship, so that's not going to be a dent to them. There is uh, Thomas Ernest. He's absolutely flying. His lap times are tumbling at the moment and making very good progress indeed. I've got to tell you, though, up at the Isle of Bens, well, there it is. They're really struggling to get the fire that's caught well and truly in that Viper under control, and uh, you've got to admire the efforts of the marshals there. The more powerful fire tender being brought in, but that's going to... Whoa, and they've got to be ever so careful. Hugely and highly trained they are, but despite the best efforts with those fire extinguishers, they really need the hose on it, and that's what they've got now. So the marshals working furiously to get those huge flames under control. No problem, though, for Magnus Ballander. He still continues on his merry way. Must be getting near to the time where he'll be thinking about handing it over at the moment. Tim Sugden, having acquired the car from Steve O'Rourke, brings it through bridge. Just a little bit of a lift, then puts the power. The safety car is out. Well, no surprise at all, really. They are really struggling with the car down at the Island Bends. So the safety car comes out, and the lights on top of that safety car will go on. There's confirmation of that. That's what the uh, drivers can see. SC for safety car. And into the pit lanes, they tumble. Magnus Ballander there, keen to get to his position. A few others following on behind, but the rest of them are lining up now behind the safety car, trying to keep some heat in those tyres by using half the track to weave around. Well, Ian Astley will hand over in the Lotus Esprit V8 to Jackie van der End of the Dutch single-seater ace. So he's going to have the opportunity to uh, show what he can do in a GT car. So Wolfgang Kaufmann will take over from Ballander in the Porsche. And there, indeed, out of the pit lane in the Esprit goes Jackie van der Ender. Let's just have a look at that replay again. Now you can see the Viper well and truly on fire there. Richard Dean jumps out, and I'm sure I'm, he looks to struggle away there, falls down. I'm sure he's trying to get his radio connection undone. He would have just been so keen to get away from that blazing inferno. Well, horrific stuff. And that's sort of the reason why we've got this safety car. All in this time, Wolfgang Kaufmann, having taken over from Magnus Ballander, occupies his rightful position at the head of the Crocodile, and he will lead them away. But remember, they can't start racing until they get the green light. Although some behind seem to think that they maybe should. Well, there we go. Kaufmann pulls them back. And we're back racing with the green flag. In fact, it was, but it's a change behind. And Julian Bailey now finds himself with a wall of metal ahead of him as he comes to the line. Oh, and a retirement for Jamie Campbell-Walter in the Harrier. Well, that's bad news for Jamie. He's had a good year in his TVR this year, but uh, it's not to be here for this final round of the GT Championship. But here is Bailey. Lights on to indicate to others running slower behind. And, oh, and oh, Wolfgang Kaufmann. Well held, sir. Well, here comes Tim Sugden. Just have a look at, look at those lines that uh, Wolfgang Kaufmann's left down. There he is on the right-hand side, so Sugden will fly by him. And he slices his way through past the Marcus and the Porsche, leaving them trailing in his wake. Behind everybody trying to find a breaking point, I think. And perhaps all 
inching up and closing up behind. Well, this happens, doesn't it, when you get the safety car. It's a great spectacle for us. And Julian Bailey now has got to dig down deep and find all his skills to get past. Likewise, Jackie van der Ender. Now, moisture there on the windscreen. Just looking around at the weather here at Silverstone. Is there any evidence of uh, any cloud? I suspect that's moisture coming out of one of the cars up ahead. And there are a fair few of them there that need to be negotiated. Tim Sutton's already done it. And there is Wolfgang Kaufmann. Well, the team will know what's happened. He may have told them on the radio, and if he hasn't done, they'll certainly be able to pick it up as a result of his uh, slower lap time on that occasion. Now, there is definitely moisture there. So we have got spots of rain here at Silverstone. Despite uh, that incident, though, from Kaufman, he still manages to complete the lap in the lead, but look how close Julian Bailey is, is inching closer towards him. And uh, Kaufman will be very keen indeed to try and keep the ex-Formula 1 Grand Prix driver right behind him as he moves to the inside of the 33 car. Jason Saunders having taken over from his father there. Oh, and Jackie van der Ende runs wide. He's got a wheel on the curb and spins it around. Well, hopefully he doesn't hit anything or anybody. And in fact, there are four cars at the moment on the lead lap. And that Lotus Esprit running in the GT2 class and leading the GT2 class is the fourth car on that lead lap. Here's another one of them in third place at the moment. William Hewland now at the wheel of the other of the listers. And Hewland goes to the inside of the Porsche, still in third place. Up ahead, remember, Julian Bailey is in second, still Kaufman, there he is, oh, and this is the battle for the lead! So this is first and second on the track, and you can see the distance between them, nothing at all, and Hewland, whoo! Blimey Thomas heard us there, chopped his nose off, didn't he? I think it was a fair manoeuvre. But remember, since we restarted under the safety car, it's effectively been a 10-minute sprint. And at the moment, Kaufman is leading that. But how much longer can he hold off Julian Bailey as they come around this time to complete their final lap? And Kaufman really has to occupy the racing line as accurately as possible and not give any opportunity to Julian Bailey. But Bailey's on the ground. He's to the inside. Bailey will go through to take the lead on the final lap. Unbelievable stuff here. But Kaufman fights back too as they come out of cops. But can Bailey hang on? I think the answer is yes, he can. Now, Bat Marcus could be a factor here. And there's one of them. Nick Well sees the car flash by him. And here's the scrap going on. Third place at the moment, occupied by the second of these two cars here. But that ahead is Thomas Erdos. So as we said before, he's flying. I'm sure that uh, William Hewland now will look to go down the inside and list up. Well, besides that discretion and valour and all that, he'll hang on exactly where he is for the moment. Out of cops. But here they come. Bailey then, half a lap to go with... Kaufman behind him. Now, will Kaufman try and mount a challenge? I'm not sure that Kaufman is uh, close enough, and Bailey certainly looks to be on it as he comes to bridge. Just a lift there through bridge, wasn't that? Spitting flame out the side. Glorious sight, these listers. And excellent stuff there from Julian Bailey as he capitalised last time round at Cops, and this time Kaufman as they come towards the field. The reconstituted complex this year and well he wasn't quite close enough was he and Bailey's got a back marker in front of him if he can't get past that back marker it could be a problem Susie Hartbanks is she away yes she is moves out of the Mustang and here comes the checkered flag for Julian Bailey brings the Lister Storm home to take another victory Wolfgang Kaufmann and Magnus Bollander will take second place but who's going to take third there he is William Hewland partnered earlier on by Paul Evans with Thomas Erdos there, well, Erdos and Purvis finish in sixth place on the results. There is William Hewland coming home in third. Well, it's been a terrific spectacle up on the podium, Tiff Liddell and, of course, his partner Julian Bailey alongside him. There's confirmation of the result, 50 minutes and 28.3 seconds it took for them to take that victory in this final round. Vanquished their Mercedes teammates, Bert Schneider and Mar